Modern warfare in the 21st century is unlike anything we've ever seen before. From GPS guided rockets hitting targets over 70 kilometers away, drones being shot down by anti-drone electromagnetic pulse rifles, to satellites and high-tech fighter jets. It's all starting to look like something out of a science fiction movie. The only difference is, this is real life with real people. But there's one weapon that's more powerful than all of these, and it also fits in your pocket. In fact, you're probably watching this very video on it right now. And that weapon is the smartphone. Just imagine for a second the power of putting a supercomputer in the pocket of every soldier on the battlefield. With today's technology, the modern smartphone really is a mini supercomputer the size of your palm. In fact, it's millions of times more powerful than all of the computers used to send the first man to the moon. And both Ukrainian and Russian soldiers are using smartphones to change the battlefield dynamic in a way no one could have predicted. For example, taking high definition photos and videos and sending them straight to a commander at the rear, or connecting to drones to pilot them and stream real time enemy troop positions. Not to mention each smartphone acts as an instant line of communication from anywhere on the battlefield. Gone are the days of carrier pigeons running wire or lugging around a huge radio. Just pick up your phone and call your lieutenant on WhatsApp. But perhaps the biggest battlefield revolution is the smartphone's ability to act as a gateway to the internet and the unlimited amount of information, communication and global access it provides to each individual soldier. Not to mention the impact of propaganda and social media all funneled into a tiny little five inch screen for the viewing pleasure of, well, everyone in the entire world. I bet these guys would have loved to get their hands on this capability 80 years ago. Firstly, let's address the elephant in the room. How do you even get a phone signal in a modern war zone? I mean, the entire eastern half of Ukraine has been decimated by Russian artillery and airstrikes, taking out most of the infrastructure, including cellular towers. Well, just a few years ago, there would have been very few solutions. That is, until this guy came along. Despite his cringy memes and Twitter antics, Elon has spearheaded some pretty advanced tech, like Starlink. Starlink is a satellite constellation in low Earth orbit, orbiting the Earth around 550 kilometers above the surface. As of December 2022, Starlink had over 3,300 satellites in orbit, all of them providing internet access coverage to designated ground transceivers, transceivers that Elon sent to Ukraine in great numbers at the outbreak of war. These transceivers are tiny, portable, and are very easy to install. In fact, the entire city of Irpin was reconnected to the internet in mere hours when all 24 of their cell towers were destroyed by Russian strikes. In the field, the setup is even easier. Connect a Starlink transceiver to a power source, such as a generator or battery, point it at the sky, and that's it. You can now contact and send images and videos to any location on the entire planet within seconds. This raises the question though, what about traditional military communication methods like radio? Because despite their convenience and usefulness, smartphones do have weaknesses. They can be hacked, wiretapped, or even used to locate your exact location. Mike Fong, the CEO of Privoro, a hardware-based mobile security company, described a soldier using a smartphone on the battlefield as the digital equivalent of lighting a cigarette at night while an enemy sniper is watching. The biggest drawback of using an everyday consumer smartphone you can buy in stores is that it's not designed for military use, so it's not very stealthy. Using a smartphone creates a digital signal that can be detected and used to pinpoint a location. In fact, this is supposedly what the Ukrainians used for the New Year's Day strike that killed a significant number of Russian soldiers. Soldiers who, just minutes before, had all texted friends and loved ones Happy New Year from their personal smartphones, lighting up their location like a lighthouse during a storm. It's the deadliest strike since the start of the war. However, this vulnerability can also be used to trick and mislead the enemy. Take this first person anecdote from an officer on the front line in Ukraine, for example. I went with a guy who had to broadcast coordinates. I cleared the field, he set it up. Then I check with the map and see we came to a wrong area. He says, I know. And then the area where we were supposed to be is shelled. He says, got it. I say, got it. And then a new strike hits very close to us. And the guy goes nuts. What bastard took the phone? I'll kill ya. And a young soldier comes forward and says, I just called mama. In five minutes, we were gone. 
and the place was pulverized. Now, it's in situations like these where military communication methods like radios, field phones connected by wire, or even military satellite phones are usually preferable. But often that equipment is simply not available in both the Ukrainian and Russian militaries. Smartphones, although not perfect, are cheap, easy to use, and everyone has one. So why not use it? Let's start with the most obvious use of smartphones during a modern war information gathering. Let's be honest, your average infantry soldier isn't exactly a genius. So what happens when you equip them with a mini supercomputer connected to the internet? Well, they turn into an intelligence gold mine. When the first Russian troops invaded Ukraine in 2022, they brought their own smartphones with them. When the Ukrainians figured this out, they cut off Russian phone numbers from the Ukrainian network and the Russian phones stopped working. According to Ukraine's State Service of Special Communications and Information Protection, in response, Russian troops began to seize smartphones from Ukrainian civilians. The civilians complied and then notified the Ukrainian government and provided details about the seized phone, allowing Ukrainian intelligence to effectively turn these phones into listening and tracking devices. This resulted in a huge amount of critical information being leaked, including location of troops, tactics, and what weapons were being used. Even if the phone wasn't directly compromised, any calls from soldiers using cell towers in the area could be intercepted by Ukrainian or Russian intelligence. This was used effectively as propaganda, particularly by the Ukrainians to paint a picture of low morale and disillusion within Russian ranks. This is assuming, of course, as mentioned previously, that the mere use of a smartphone doesn't reveal your location straight away and get you killed halfway through your call, as seen in the New Year's Eve strike at Makivka, where reportedly around 400 Russian conscripts died in a single strike. However, perhaps the most effective way to take advantage of bored soldiers with access to the internet is by geolocating everything they post. A selfie with a landmark in the background, a short TikTok of tanks driving on a road, or a simple video clip of a funny moment in a trench. All it takes is one person to recognize the inside of a factory or match the curve of a road with Google Maps, and the location of the uploader can be determined within minutes. This was used to great effect even before the war began. And it can even be as simple as using the Find My app to track a pair of AirPods that a Russian soldier looted from a Ukrainian house. And don't forget that your own data can betray you. Most photos and videos recorded on a smartphone contain something called metadata. Metadata can include mostly harmless data like phone model or camera shutter speed, but it can also include information like date, time, or even specific GPS location data. And location data isn't the only form of metadata that can betray you, as these Russian soldiers found out after their phone numbers were leaked, as their number was contained within the metadata attached to audio files recorded on their phone, criticizing the war and Vladimir Putin. Although even Putin himself is not immune to the ramifications of metadata. All in all, the smartphone is a veritable leaky sieve of wartime intelligence, and there is no doubt that both sides are taking advantage of it. But speaking of advantages, the smartphone also unlocks several capabilities that we've simply never seen before during wartime. The first of which is just how insanely fast detailed information can be transmitted and received. For example, how an elderly friend of Ukrainian Dmitro Lasovy's parents was able to spearhead the destruction of an entire Russian convoy. On the second day of the invasion, elderly friends of his parents, who did not have a smartphone, called to tell them where they had seen a Russian convoy close to the airport. Lasovy immediately opened Stop Russian War, which was a telegram chatbot created by the security services, and he input the location. He also put a pin in the Google Maps location, screenshotted it and sent that, plus everything else he knew. Now, breaking this down, it means a random civilian simply spotted a Russian convoy, and within minutes, every Ukrainian soldier with a smartphone received a notification with detailed location data. And that Russian convoy was attacked just 30 minutes after the message had been sent. This phenomenon of civilians providing real-time intelligence has been dubbed the Observer Corps, 
It acts as a kind of de facto network that spans the entirety of Ukraine, reporting on Russian military activity in real time via the use of smartphones. Speaking of real time, what better way to debunk misinformation and propaganda by simply taking a quick video selfie? Ukrainian soldiers have developed a strategy where they will take a video selfie in front of a definable landmark that can be geolocated. So when Russian forces claim they've captured a specific city or area, all it takes is one lone Ukrainian soldier with a smartphone to stand in front of a church or a street sign and the Russian propaganda is completely dispelled with almost zero effort or delay. And this instant access to information also greatly benefits individual soldiers, particularly on the Ukrainian side. In the early days of the war, many Ukrainian soldiers were inexperienced or simply had no idea how to use or maintain the myriad of weapons and equipment they were issued. This was, and is, compounded by the assortment of different weapon systems supplied by various Western countries. Picture this, you're in the Ukrainian Territorial Defense Force at the Battle of Kyiv, and you've only had a few weeks of training. Suddenly, you're handed a Javelin anti-tank missile, but you have no idea how to use it. So what do you do? Well, whip out your smartphone and start watching YouTube tutorials, of course. No, seriously, this actually happened. And there is in fact a ton of information online regarding the use of various weapon systems, or even cleaning and maintaining Western rifles. And this wasn't limited to just Ukrainian soldiers either, with many Russian troops using Wikipedia to quickly find important information. Smartphones also provide a quick and easy way for Western countries to provide information to Ukrainian soldiers on the ground. For example, when Western tanks start arriving in Ukraine, an army mechanic from the US could simply FaceTime his Ukrainian counterpart to help with a particularly tricky repair instead of the tank being sent to a neighboring NATO country. This ease of communication extends into other areas of the battlefield. Soldiers and commanders can share images and videos in real time, or if their military radios are jammed by the enemy, simply pull out their phone and use an encrypted WhatsApp chat instead. Like in the Battle of Irpin during the first few days of the war. The Russians were jamming Ukrainian radio channels, so Ukrainian commanders utilized runners and WhatsApp in order to continue to direct artillery fire. Speaking of radios, this is a drone controlled by a smartphone screen picking up the radio of a dead Russian soldier, giving the Ukrainians instant access to Russian communications in that area. Although drones are a topic for an entirely separate video. But perhaps the most profound impact smartphones have had on this war is the sheer amount of data, images and video that have been captured from both sides. In previous wars, even more recent wars such as Iraq and Afghanistan, it was either difficult to do this due to the limited technology at the time, or simply due to a lack of network infrastructure to provide a signal. But now, almost every person on both sides of the conflict can tell their own story, and share images and videos documenting the war in its entirety. This has already been instrumental in documenting war crimes or heroism on the front line, or simply what life is like in the trenches of a 21st century conflict, broadcast to the entire world in near real time. Just imagine if we had access to this kind of footage from World War II or Gettysburg or Agincourt. One thing's for sure, this war will be catalogued in its entirety for all future generations to see. And at this point, no one really knows what effect this may have on society and the world as we know it. Perhaps adages such as history is written by the victor may lose their meaning. How can you rewrite history when every little detail is inscribed on the internet for everyone to see? Regardless, this video only just scratches the surface. The true power of a smartphone is not in its ability to be used on the battlefield but its ability to channel a more sinister force. A force that is already changing the world, and not for the better. This sinister force is social media and the disinformation and propaganda it channels. And if you want to learn more, like the TikTok soldiers of the Ukraine war, make sure you watch the next video linked in the description down below.